Okay, and finally, what we are going to do to finalize this chapter is to optimize this cross section, right? Because if we remember, uh, if you remember, what we did was to assign the same cross section to all elements, in this case, the HB100. But it might be the case that perhaps the forces are too high for, for that particular cross section, so we need another one, or that they are too low, so the cross section could be a smaller one. In this case, this is the smallest cross section. So, it could not be smaller, but you, you understand what I mean, right? And for that, what we are going to do is to analyze the utilization. So we are not going to use this utilization factor here, but what we are going to do is to use this component here, utilization of elements. And the reason for that is that this utilization component, this takes into account the actual formula from the euro code, right? In order to define the utilization, which also uh, considers uh, buckling effects, as we were um, saying, and so on and so forth. However, this utilization formula here, it just checks the stresses in comparison with the uh, stresses with the maximum stress of our material, right? With the so-called yield strength. But of course, when we are dealing with, with compression forces, that's not enough because we can have buckling. And for that reason, we are going to analyze them with this component here. But actually, so what we can do is to take a look and we can see how, <laughs> how most of the utilization values are above one, which means that this uh, cross section is not enough, right? So if we have an utilization factor of 1.0, it would mean that the cross section is perfect for that particular force and it is lower, we have some certain um, some certain margin, right? This is this could be okay, 0 0.71. And if the utilization values are above one, the member could be failing. So just yeah, so you understand it, but we are not going to use this component for the optimization because in Karma there is the an, an own component just for that, which is the optimized cross section component. So we get this guy here, and what we need to do is to connect the um, the calculated model, and we also need to connect the. I mean, we could select just which elements we want to to optimize, but in this case, we are going to optimize all of them. So let's leave it like that, and we also need to connect the cross sections um, list, right? That we are going to use for the optimization. So for that reason. Let's connect the in, the output of this cross section rate selector component, right? Not from the last one, from, but from, from this first one in which we were getting a list of cross sections. So let's go for it. And it seems like this is working. And what we need to do now is, okay, and take a look. We are going to copy these two components here, model view and uh, beam view. We are going to hide the previous one. And we are going to connect the output of our optimized model. We are going to connect it here. So now what we can do is, well, first of all, we can get back to cross section. And, uh, and that's right. So now the thing is that if we take a closer look and we can uh, hide these values here as well. So now, as you can see, the cross sections are being optimized for each member. When we have lower forces, the cross sections are uh, small as well, right? HEP 160 and so on and so forth. However, in the center part, where we have the bigger forces, the cross sections are being optimized and we need bigger cross sections. So that's the reason. And however, even though we have similar um, force values in both lower chord and upper chord, you can realize that the cross-sections in, cross in the upper chord are somehow bigger. And the reason for that is that this optimization component is taking into account these buckling effects, right? So for that reason, since these, are, these members are under compression, they need to be bigger in, uh, in order to avoid buckling. So that could be it. This is my optimization. And now let's take a look into some additional parameters. For instance, a very interesting parameter here would be the number of iterations. In this case, it's set to five by default, but now this is interesting because since we are dealing with a statically determined structure, right? In which the cross sections, the stiffness of the cross sections uh, don't affect the results. 
we can set, set this guy just into one, right? Because the cross sections are being optimized, but the force values are going to remain the same. So one iteration is enough. And you can see how the execution time is a bit lower. That's right. You could also take a look into the safety factors. In this case, this might need to be 1.1, comma 1 for instability. And yeah, also you, you could decide whether you want to do elastic design or plastic design, and you could also set the maximum utilization. So in case that you want to have some additional safety factor there, you could specify, for instance, 0 0.9. So let's leave it like that. And finally, another thing would be, okay, but let's imagine what would happen if this trust could not be created, such as um, this member is assembled independently, but this upper code and lower code has created just as one simple element. So for that, in case that this upper code were just one single beam that comes from the, from the factory, that could mean that we can just assign one cross section for all these elements. And what we need to do for that is to use the group identifiers. So, of course, this is related with identifiers that we define here at the very beginning for our elements. And what we can do is to use that, for instance, upper code and lower code. And now, Sorry, this should be lower code and multi-lane data. No, and now if we do this here, okay, but sorry, <laughs> you need to check that um, this is grafted, right? The, the identifiers are not flattened by grafted so that we can assign each one of them to its list here. So now this should be working and we can see how we are assigning the same cross-section for all the elements in the upper code and lower code. Uh, I'm sorry, I hope you realize this uh, error later on, but uh, that's important to uh, check, right? And that would be a, a trick. And also what we could do is, okay, but since this is a, a single element, uh, we don't have like pin connections between each member of the upper code. So for that reason, what we could do, of course, is to remove these identifiers from the pin joints uh, component and now we might have some small bending moments here let's uh, check it actually and uh, yeah that's right that's not very very important but in case that this um stress would be constructed in, in that way that the upper chord and lower chord are just one single element we would have some small bending moments here which we would need to consider of course so uh okay let's leave it like that and i think that that should be everything about design and even optimization of trust structures.